Hey there, it's Asia. Today let's practice answering one of the most common types of questions in IELTS listening. Missing words or, as they're also known, filling the gap questions. I'll give you some tips on how to find answers and what to look out for to avoid mistakes. I've prepared for you two recordings with different types of questions to practice together. So grab a pen and paper to write down your answers and let's get started! The first recording is what you usually get at the very beginning of the listening test. You'll hear a dialogue and need to complete information in the notes. When you see this task, check how many words are you allowed to use in your answers. If the task says not more than one word and or a number, and your answer has two words, it's incorrect. Read all the questions before the recording begins and anticipate the answer. Are you waiting for a number? Is it the size in meters, centimeters or maybe inches? Is it a noun or a verb? This information will help you concentrate. Let's practice. Ready? Now you have some time to read questions number one to eight. You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and an agent at a company which ships large boxes overseas. Good morning, Packham's shipping agents. Can I help you? Oh, yes. I'm ringing to make inquiries about sending a large box, uh, a container, back home to Kenya from the UK. Yes, of course. Would you like me to try and find some quotations for you? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, first of all, I need a few details from you. Fine. Can I take your name? It's Jacob M. Kerry. Can you spell your surname, please? Yes, it's M-K-E-R-E. -E. Is that M for mother? Yes. Thank you. And you say that you will be sending the box to Kenya? That's right. And where would you like the box picked up from? From college, if possible. Yes, of course. I'll take down the address now. It's Westall College. Is that W-E-S-T-A-L-L? -L? Yes, college. Westall College. And where's that? It's Downlands Road in Bristol. Oh, yes, I know it. And the postcode? It's BS89PU. Right. And I need to know the size. Yes, I've measured it carefully and it's 1.5 metres long. Right. 0.75 metres wide. OK. And it's 0.5 metres high or, or, or deep. Great. So I'll calculate the volume in a moment and get some quotes for that. But first, can you tell me, you know, very generally, what will be in the box? Yes, uh, th there's mostly clothes. OK. And there's some books. OK, good. Um, anything else? Uh, yes, th there's also some toys. OK, and what is the total value, do you think, of the contents? Well, the main costs are the clothes and the books. They'll be about £1,500. But then the toys are about another 200 So I'd put down £1,700. OK, how did it go? Let's check. The first answer is a surname, Mkere. In this case, it was just spelled out one letter after another. When you have a more common surname, the spelling may be not what you expect. Listen to this example. My name is Alice Brown. Is it B-R-O-W-N? No, it's B-R-A-U-N. So listen to all the information provided. Don't assume you already know the answer before they finish discussing it. Next. 
Westall. When your answer is a name of a place or a surname, don't forget to capitalize the first letter. Alternatively, you can write all the answers in capital letters. Number three, BS89PU. This is a postcode, a British postcode, which means it's a combination of letters and numbers written with a space in the middle. So you may not know that, so both answers with a space and without a space are acceptable. If you remember, they were talking about Bristol and the first two letters here are BS, which in our case means Bristol. That's a little tip. Number four and five. Okay, here we have tons of options of how you can write down your answers. I find that the easiest way is to use the format you see in the example. The length was already given, 1.5 m. Please note that in English we put a point and not a comma. In the recording you could hear not 0.75 meters and not 0.5 meters. Not means zero. In a telephone number, it's common to say O instead of zero. My number is 0785 and so on. Perhaps I shouldn't spell it out. So you can write down the word meter using the British or American spelling, but I think you should just write M and for centimeters, cm, not sm. Next, in either order, books, toys. If you include the word sum, it's okay. And the last one, 1,700. In English, we put a comma to separate thousands. It's called a thousands separator. Use a comma and not a point. In some languages, it's the other way around. I think you should also know that this number can be read as 1700. So how much is 1200? It's 1200. Ready for the next recording? You'll be required to complete sentences. This means that you need to read whole sentences to find out what you're looking for before the recording begins. During your exam, use the time given to revise questions from the previous section and the time for instructions to read all the questions from the next section. I'm going to be generous and give you 20 seconds. Let's start. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, did you find it hard studying with the Open University? You mean because you're studying on your own most of the time? Mm. Well, it took me a while to get used to it. I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation because it's so different from school. There's no one saying, why haven't you written your assignment yet? And that sort of thing. Oh, dear. You'll learn it, Paul. Another thing was that I got very good at time management because I had to fit time for studying round a full-time job. Well, I'm hoping to change to working part-time, so that'll help. Mm. What makes it easier is that the degree is made up of modules, so you can take time off between them if you need to. It isn't like a traditional three- or four-year course where you've got to do the whole thing of it in one go. Oh, that's good, because I'd like to spend six months travelling next year. Huh, it's all right for some. <laughs> then, even though you're mostly studying at home, remember you've got tutors to help you, and from time to time there are summer schools. They usually last a week. They're great, because you meet all the other people struggling with the same things as you. Oh. I've made some really good friends that way. Sounds good. Uh, so how do I apply? OK, let's check the answers. Number one, Rachel said, I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation 
because it's so different from school? The correct answer is motivation. Number two. Another thing was that I got very good at time management because I had to fit time for studying around a full-time job. The correct answer is time management. As you can see, you may or may not use a hyphen. It's very important to spell words correctly. If you make a mistake, your answer is incorrect. Number three. What makes it easier is that the degree is made up of modules. So you can take time off between them if you need to. The answer is modules, plural, not module. Look at the question. It was helpful that the course was structured in... Remember that we don't include articles in our answers. As there is no article A or N in the question, the noun that follows must be plural or uncountable. Otherwise, the sentence completed with your answer won't be grammatically correct. There should be no missing articles or verbs in incorrect forms. You should read the sentence and it should be correct. And the last question. From time to time, there are summer schools. They usually last a week. They were clearly talking about summer schools, in plural. However, both summer school and summer schools are correct answers. Put them into the sentence. She enjoyed meeting other students at summer school or summer schools. Both are correct. Okay, before summarizing the tips from today's lesson, tell me in the comments how many questions out of 12 could you answer correctly? I'd love to know. And here are the tips. Check how many words you are allowed to use in your answers. If the task says not more than one word and or a number and your answer has two words, it's incorrect. Be careful. Read all the questions before the recording begins. And anticipate the answer. Are you waiting for a name or for a size or for a verb? Check if the spelling is correct. You may use British or American spelling. The spelling of names may be unexpected. You may write your answers in capital letters. Don't include articles or prepositions in your answers. Check if the completed sentences are grammatically correct. Of course, you don't have time to do that while the recording is playing, but you are given some time after the test when you can do that. Today's practice questions are written by Cambridge English and their practice tests are just like the real exams, so I recommend using them to practice. If you're wondering what other steps you should take to prepare for IELTS listening or other sections of the test, feel free to download my step-by-step -step IELTS study plan. And you can also watch the video about one of the most challenging types of tasks in IELTS listening, maps. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!